Hey everyone, this is Jason. Um, I want to make a video today. Somebody asked me to do another video about <clears throat> the alternative right and how Alex Jones kind of helped get Donald Trump elected, and that uh, and how kind of a quick, brief history of you know Alex Jones and where how far he's evolved to um, from where he used to be <clears throat> when I used to listen to Alex Jones. Two thousand one, I was a huge. Um, Two thousand two, three, four. Let's put it that way. Uh, when the internet started to really get to Alaska and really became, you were able to, you know, get high speed internet, et cetera. I started to watch Alex Jones. Alex Jones was a, you know, Infowars, Prison Planet, et cetera. Um, I did it because I was handed a CD from a friend who handed me a copy of his movie Road to Tyranny. Now, Road to Tyranny is completely about how the um, government committed a false flag attack on itself, 9/11, to have a never-ending war on terror. Now, I. Totally, 100% started to flesh this out and investigate it, read other books, read mainstream news, read articles from people from Greg Palace to Noam Chomsky to Mike Parenti to um, <clears throat> Howard Zinn on some levels. They weren't advocating conspiracy necessarily, but they were giving context to what Alex Jones was saying and giving validity to a lot of it through American foreign policy, how we uh, treated Iraq, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, etc. Alex Jones was crucially important to my life as a young, uh, as a younger, 2004, as a younger uh, conspiracy theorist. Now, I'm not a hardcore conspiracy theorist. In fact, I'm a leftist conspiracy theorist. I think the military industrial complex is the absolute problem. There's your conspiracy. They get most of our money. They get 60% of the federal tax dollars. Um, of course, the recent studies, the recent government accounting office showed that they lost, that the Pentagon lost seven trillion dollars in like a 15-year period. Seven trillion dollars, just gone. Can't account for it. Gone. We've seen um, massive waste from the Pentagon. We've seen a kind of an agenda from the Pentagon to have never-ending warfare. Because if you don't have never, if you if you can't create an enemy, then you have no money that goes into the military. No enemy, no money. Of course, we fight. We always fight the other. We fought. Uh, we had to fight the savages, which were the Indians at first, and then we fought the communists. And now we're fighting the terrorists, the, the Muslims. This is a very convenient uh, war on because the Muslims uh, sit on land that is rich in natural resources, not just oil, but and not just natural resources, but also geostrategic positioning. Afghanistan is full of minerals. The heroin trade pipelines, natural gas and oil and gas pipelines, and it's also a gateway to a whole other world that is controlled predominantly by Muslims, and it extends almost all the way to Russia. So uh, Dave Emery refers to it as the island Earth, and the Earth Island, and it's a take on an old movie, but it's true. That's the future, that part of the world, and it's smack dab between China and Russia. So the Project for New American Century lays this all out. We can go into the different conspiracy theories about this, but the Project for New American Century, which the people that wrote the Project for New American Century then became, then went into the State Department and the Defense Department, and then 9-11 happened. So you'd have to be a fucking moron to ignore the Project for a New American Century and claim that they didn't predict what was going to happen in the future, and then the very people that predicted it went into the places where they would need to go to aid in this um, attack on America by Muslim extremists. Now, if you know anything, and I'm going to stick to AJ here, I just read an interview, or I just read a post that Paul Joseph Watson did on Drudge Report. Well, he did it on Twitter, but it was posted on Drudge, and it was, of course, talking about the show Homeland. Now, the show Homeland, of course, I've talked about before, I've made videos. It's, in my opinion, I can't prove this, but it's, in my opinion, straight propaganda. I watched the first season of it, and it was about a mentally ill CIA agent, Claire Danes, who went after a, a, um, <clears throat> a soldier who was an American soldier who was actually radicalized, uh, was tortured and radicalized to be a Muslim terrorist. It's completely logical and implausible. And ridiculous, but the reason the mo the show I believe was put on the air to begin with was for the Central Intelligence Agency to advocate for its ability to come into the United States and gather intelligence. The first season of Homeland, if you don't believe me, please go watch it. The first season of Homeland shows the CIA breaking into homes in the United States and setting, and they're the good guy. And Claire Danes' his character is mentally ill. She's on meds. She's nuts. But she's a central intelligence agent, and she's so brilliant and so ahead of the curve and such a hero that you don't mind her mental illness. And, and her mental illness actually gives her even, like, superpowers. Like, that's the thing about, that I've watched on these shows. Somebody will have a mental illness, and somehow it makes them, gives them superpowers. Like the show Sherlock. I love the show Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. It's British. But it's absurd. 
he's mentally ill, but it gives him superpowers. <laughs> okay. So they do the same fucking thing with Claire Danes' character in Homeland. And it's straight. It feels like it's from the same people that created 24. And 24 was the iconic torture show. It's the show that, I, I've said this before, Laura Ingram said, Americans watch 24. They torture on 24. Americans are for torture. Laura Ingram said that. I don't know why the media just doesn't play that every time Laura Ingram comes up because it's it's an syllogism that is completely in, insane. <laughs> um, or it's like an syllogism, I guess. She so the whole show pro, homeland propaganda. Well, Paul Joseph Watson, the British, that little troglodyte motherfucking little. I cannot fucking stand Paul Joseph Watson. I didn't even like him when when Alex when he when I watched Alex Jones. I would hear Paul. I would have to read Paul Joseph Watson stuff or listen to his little his his slow delivery as he told you something. I mean, he was worse than Michael Caine. Hello, I'm Michael Caine, and I, I always assumed that Paul Joseph Watson was trying to do Michael Caine, but not a very good job of it. And so, and I don't like Paul Joseph Watson's information. I can't stand. He's always taking the side of Alex Jones. Anybody that ever goes after Alex Jones for being a lying sack of shit or goes out or attacks the alternative right wing or attacks any of these iconic right wing idiots, Paul Joseph Watson will run right out, scurry right out there and do it. Everything the federal government does is bad. And by the way, he's in England. He's in the Great Britain. He's not even here. So he, uh, he, he loves going after the federal government and telling you how bad it is. And now this is all a pro-business agenda. If you know anything about Alex Jones, he is a gold and silver pimp. That is Alex Jones's job. He is owned, bought and paid for by Midas Resources. He is a precious metal infomercial. He's Glenn Beck. Well, Glenn Beck's doing Alex Jones actually, just of a lesser version. But they're all gold pimps. They're all natural, they're all precious metal pimps. They're all Koch brother owned and funded. You can go back and look at some of the connections of Glenn Beck and his, and his ridiculous shit. You can look at Alex Jones. There are videos that you can watch of Alex Jones who says, you know, I, you know, you know, look, 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 look. I know everybody's bashing the Koch brothers. Uh, okay. But, 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 but the Koch brothers, you know, you know, they're just trying to make money. Uh, you know, I think it's a real problem is the federal government. And I've heard Alex Jones say this. this is one of the reasons I stopped listening to Alex Jones. And you can go watch these. I'm not making any of this shit up, folks. Go feel free to go watch your Alex Jones videos. A lot of people have made uh, whole channels about how crazy Alex Jones is and his weird conspiracy theories and always defending the Koch brothers' interests or always defending that, that, the idea of free enterprise and that business is the answer and if the government would just get the fuck out of the way, hmm, who does that sound like to you? That he supported Amon Bundy regardless of the fact that Amon Bundy was actually going in federal lands and, and not paying for his, for his animals to graze and making that out to be everyone's issue. Like, was that the thing that you really wanted to go and protest? Was that the thing that you really wanted to get behind? The the ability to seize federal lands for more use that you don't need to? Or using federal lands illegally? You don't own any fucking cattle. This guy owns tons and tons of heads of cattle. And he was a racist piece of shit. I mean, but that but but Alex Jones in the right wing gets behind that. You know, the Pete Santillis of the world. These kind of conspiracy theorists, right wingers, who clearly have who clearly either are being sponsored or paid for by other people or agents of some kind of disinformation campaign. And maybe they're just wrong, whatever. But they seem to get a lot of reach. They seem to get very popular and see and seem to have and sometimes they'll have celebrities on. I mean, or they'll have you know what I saw Dave Mustaine. Dave Mustaine is a regular who's the who's the who's the head lead singer of uh Megadeth, and he advocated for Rick Santorum. I mean, that's the kind of people that Alex Jones has on. They're only conservatives. Liberals don't go on his show. Leftist conspiracy theorists, I don't think, go on his show anymore. Some do. I mean, some claim that they are, but they're really not. They're more mainstream people who like Alex Jones because he has this, he does tell the truth. You think he, you're getting the truth from Alex Jones, and you largely do in a lot of ways. In fact, after 9-11, he advocated that the whole war on terror was fake. There was no, Paul Joseph Watson in his, this recent post advocates that the, that the homeland should have stuck to going after Islamic terrorists. That's what they should have stuck to because that was, that was, that's real. This is from the same people who claim the war on terror is completely fake. That 9-11 was an inside job, a self-inflicted wound, a false flag to get never-ending war in the Middle East, what I just described in the beginning of this video. That was what Alex Jones, his whole fucking thing was. Now it's changed. He's a Trump guy. He always supports the Republican. When it gets close to the presidential elections, he reels in his conspiracy theories and backs the right wing. He backed Mitt Romney, John, I think he backed John McCain. I'm not 100% sure. He eventually did, but he, but Mitt Romney and now Trump. And he's always advocating for, I mean, I heard him advocate slightly for Rick Perry. He's a very dangerous human being because he's not serious. 
Alex Jones has only his self-interest. That's it. He's not trying to inform you. He, 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 he's not trying to give you information. He's not trying to make you smarter. He's trying to make you a right-wing conspiracy theorist. And I heard somebody tell me who I used to be a fan of on YouTube, and I'm not anymore, but he told me that Alex Jones is the gatekeeper for the – or the gatekeeper introducer to the harder white nationalist elements of the right wing. And if you don't believe me, an example you can show is his interview with David Duke. Watch Alex Jones' interview with David Duke. Okay? It's stunning because Alex Jones doesn't challenge him on the basic assertions and that, that David Duke has made for the last 40 fucking years. It was a shock. I did a video about it. I, 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 if you feel free to go look back at my library, I made a video an analyzing it. It was, it, was, it was disturbing. And it seemed like me that Alex Jones was trying to introduce everybody to David Duke's uh, view of the world. And also, Paul Joseph Watson did something I couldn't believe in this recent, this recent post. He mentions that Homeland usually attacks, now is attacking Israeli settlers. Now, just think about that for a moment. Paul Joseph Watson, hardcore right-wing conspiracy theorist, is now defending the state of Israel for being terrorists against the Palestinian people, the settlers. Even Donald Trump said, you know, I wish you guys would calm down. With Baby Netanyahu the other day at the press conference, he said, I wish you guys would calm down with the settlers. I wish you would stop that for a while, but we'll talk about that. Even Donald Trump knows that the settlers are fascist. Recently, there was a Palestinian murdered, executed on live television by an Israeli soldier, and the Israeli soldier just got a year and a half. That's all he got for it. Executing a man, an injured guy who couldn't move, and he got a year and a half. The Palestinian people are the oppressed ones. They don't have nuclear weapons. They're throwing rocks, and the other motherfuckers are F-22 Raptors and lobbing missiles into and settling and taking more and more of the West Bank because that's the goal. The two-state solution is the only solution that'll work. A one-state solution will not work because Palestine will not accept that. And Israel knows it. And most of the people in Israel don't. I mean, the people in Israel are not the problem. It's the leaders. It's these Zionist leaders who want to take over the entire region because they think that because their people were there thousands of years ago or uh, that they deserve it over people that were already there. Sound familiar, Americans? <laughs> so the whole Palestinian... Israeli crisis is a political football. It's geostrategic positioning. Israel is a European colony in the Middle East. That's what it was established after World War II. In fact, they had been trying to do that, something similar to that, after World War I when they destroyed the Ottoman Empire. So this whole, I just had to listen to Alex Jones actually say that, or Paul Joseph Watson, excuse me, on, on Alex Jones's Infowars, that that Homeland is attacking, and Homeland is CIA propaganda, to my mind, and it's in its sixth season. Who the fuck is watching Homeland in its sixth season anyway? But, I mean, God, if you watch a show, I mean, this is just an aside. If you watch a show past the fourth or fifth season, you're probably going to be disappointed, right? You're probably going to be, and I watched the first season of Homeland, and I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stomach it anymore. It was such propaganda. It was over the top almost. And now it's, now they're going after the white nationalist radio talk show host because they're and, and Paul Joseph Watson claims that they're trying to get in good with the liberals and he even says this he goes and the show and the show was written with a the show was written with a female president it shows how out of touch the producers are she won by three million votes douchebag you, you, the, I love how Republicans pretend conservatives pretend that Hillary Clinton didn't win <laughs> I don't like Hillary Clinton I fucking hate Hillary Clinton I fucking hate Hillary Clinton but she did win you can pretend, and so those those crazy writers and crazy producers who tried to foresee the future, they were pretty goddamn dead on. They were pretty accurate, but because of, and I, I don't want to bore anybody. I know nobody wants to hear that Hillary Clinton was fucked over because she's such a horrible person, and the Clintons were such terrible people. But she had the election stolen from her in 2016. Go look at Craig Palace, uh, Greg Palace's Best Democracy Money Can Buy. You can go see it online and go read David Daly's Rat Fucked. These aren't conspiracy theories. These are proven. Chris Kobach, cross-check, vote caging, all of it. Go back to 2000 and do some research about Karl Rove and his continued stealing electronically of ballots, hacking machines. The, his main tech guy was died in a plane crash going to testify about what was going on. And I'll get, I'm will get. i going to do a video just about this someday, but right now nobody wants to hear it because everybody hates Hillary and so relieved that Hillary Clinton lost. And so relieved that we're finally done with the Clintons, so because the, the Clintons are the demons. That and I, and I'll agree. I'll agree with you. NAFTA, GATT, World Trade, Glass Steagall. We can go on and on. Bill Clinton's a piece of shit. 
But Hillary Clinton did have the election stolen from her, and she was the much, 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 much lesser of two evils than Donald Trump. And if you think that xenophobia and getting rid of immigrants that have been here, that are, that are producing in our society, that are part of our culture, that are part of our fabric, if you think building a wall, if you think um, taking the oil from Iraq, if you think never negotiating with Russia and allowing a Russian oligarch dictator to, to literally, because of money and financial interest from the oil industry, control have have a say in american foreign policy and have a say in what you know what's going on on some levels um vladimir putin, i mean it's better that we it would be better that we had a good relationship with russia unfortunately vladimir putin somehow american right wing has made vladimir putin a good guy he's not he's a piece of shit just like trump is just like clinton is vladimir putin's a piece of shit too they're piece of shit oligarchs they are not the oppressed they are the oppressor they just have less of an economy than us they just don't. They just don't spend the money on the military because they only have 100 million people. They don't have the economy we have. We have the number one economy in the world by far. It's not even close. So this this idea that we need to ally with Russia. The only reason we need to ally with Russia in the Trump in the Trump universe is so Exxon Mobil can pump out 500 billion to a trillion dollars of oil in the next 20 years. So American um, oil interests who Donald Trump because Donald Trump believes if you make money, if you're rich, you're a good person. It's the uh, Worthington Principle. I don't know if anybody ever watched the show, Mr. Show with Bob and David. Not the new version, because it's fucking terrible, but the old version in the 90s. They would say, there was, a, there was a sketch they did, and it's called the Worthington Principle. And it's, you're better than me because you make more money than me. So, for instance, they do this whole bit, and one of the examples was, David Lee Roth is better than Sir Isaac Newton, <laughs> because he makes more money. That's the Worthington Principle. That's what Donald Trump lives by. If you're rich, you're good. You're smart. You're capable. You're the best. That's how Americans view money. People that make money aren't the smartest people. Not even close. They're the most venal. They're the most greedy. They're the ones without conscience. They're the ones that are self-interested. They're the ones that destroy us. They're the ones that we should make laws against and we should hold accountable on every turn. We should not enable greed. We should be putting greedy people in jail. We should be holding them accountable. Call. We should. If you, you can't legislate... Morality, some people say, I disagree. I think you can totally fucking legislate morality. And greed is one of those things that you must legislate by capping taxes, et cetera. Capping what you can make per year if you're a CEO. Um, uh, taxes, increasing taxes on rich people. That's how you legislate greed and venality. So, but, you know, the whole country's been flipped on. Well, not the whole country. This, this country has no history of the left. It has more of a history of the right. So this is just a natural progression. This is the end of empire. This is the end of America. This is postmodern, surreal America, and it's the end. Um, it's a Simpsons episode. So it's irony, you know. David Foster Wallace said that the irony in our, our society is going to become part of it. The cynicism, the, all of that shit is going to be, eventually it's going to be what runs everything, and that's where we are. That's where the right-wing conspiracy theory, everything's cynical. We don't trust the government at all. We, we, don't, we trust business only. We, trust, we don't trust the organizing principle of mankind because we're libertarians. We, we need to have no taxes, no commons, nothing like that, and everybody is just a free-for-all. And every, nobody pays taxes, and it's just everybody just wanders around the earth making money. <laughs> that's what it is. And that's what libertarians believe, and that's more of what Alex Jones is. Um, and that libertarianism is being funded by the Koch brothers and other sources, hundreds of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars a year through different organizations from the Heritage Foundation to, I'm not going to go into all this because I've made many videos about the different tentacles of people like Paul Singer, the Koch brothers, um, and many other billionaires who you've maybe never heard of and I've never even heard of who are influencing elections all over the country on a state level, gerrymandering. And I said, go read David Daly, David Daly's book, Rat Fucked. So... The Republicans uh, have have um, now control, whether people think this or not, there's nothing alternative or independent about Alex Jones. He's a, he's a guy who believes that, that the free market is the only one that matters because the people that support him want you to blame the government, not the corporations. This is a strategic effort that's been going on since the 1970s, and Alex Jones is just part of it. Alex Jones' entire history was the war on terror is fake, 9-11 was an inside job, the globalists, the elite, the global elite, the global elite are taking over our country. We must do something about this before we lose all of our freedoms and our blah, 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 blah. And the global elite are, of course, the people inside the government. It's never business. It's never because America is capitalist. And if you have money, you can influence anything. But it's never them. He never speaks ill of Breitbart. He barely spoke. I haven't watched him about Milo recently. I'm sure he said he doesn't condone have, you know, what Milo said about 13-year-olds. 
but he loved Milo. As a matter of fact, somebody, <laughs> Dice Girl on my channel made a great fucking joke that uh, Milo is Alex Jones's anchor baby now. He's a, <laughs> ah, I just, that's so funny to me. But yeah, because that's, he is, he's a, he's an unemployed immigrant <laughs> Who's AJ's anchor baby? Great joke. Love that. Just some of that strikes me funny. But that's true. James O'Keefe, the guy that has been caught, who dressed like a pimp and, and basically got Acorn destroyed because it's, it was helping African Americans in the inner city. We can't have that. We can't have, because a lot of these people, let's be honest, don't like minorities. Let's be honest. I'm not going to call them racist because I don't have, I, I don't have enough proof of that. But these guys bring on some of the worst human beings ever. David Duke, I mean, all of a sudden, David Duke gets reintroduced to the world through Alex Jones. I mean, he was around anyway, but now Alex Jones' whole Why would Alex Jones' audience want a hate monger, piece of shit, lying sack of crap like David Duke? A guy who advocates that white people are superior to all other races, <clears throat> that we should have segregation, that we shouldn't mix, and we should close our borders. The war on terror. Now the war on terror. Alex Jones is fighting the same war on terror that less than probably 10 years ago, less than that, he said was fake. Now Islamic fascism is real. Islamic terrorism is real. And it's and it's going to come and we need to do something about it. This guy is a, I mean, I want to call him disinformation, but I don't know if that's, I don't know what he is anymore. Um, but Alex Jones has tr strategically done this over and over again uh, in the last few years, especially. And of course, now his support of Trump, Trump going on his show all the time um, and helping Trump get elected through people like Breitbart, and through people like Milo, through people like James O'Keefe, through people like the Drudge Report, which loves Alex Jones. And, you know, you don't realize how powerful these these groups or organizations are until an election or until something comes up and then they, they have hundreds of millions of followers or hundreds or tens of millions of followers. And they have lots of people who espouse these same positions. And then it gets turned into from government conspiracy, 9-11 was an inside job to have a never ending war on terror to now the war on terror is real, Islamic fascism and terrorism is real, and we need to, and now, and the Israelis are the oppressed ones, and Homeland should, st the show, a propaganda show, essentially, that they probably, I mean, should have never liked, or should have never thought was good, because the first season was so offensive, now they're pissed about it because it's they have a character that's clearly a representation of Alex Jones, you know the crazy Southern uh, uh, radio character, caricature. Uh, we got we got to stop. You know everything's going to hell. Everything's bad. Everything's out uh, gloom and doom. Uh, now here's Ted Anderson to talk about uh, gold coins with eight percent markup with goofy designs on them. Here's a big Berkey water filter. The world is ending. Everything is going bad. You're going to die. Black people, Mexicans are going to come into your neighborhoods and kill everybody you love. They're going to rape, 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 rape. I've heard Alex Jones just espouse some of the weirdest, craziest shit. And this guy still has tens of millions of listeners. He's a multi, multi-millionaire. He's quite wealthy. He's doing very well for himself. He owns multiple houses. Um, and he just keeps doubling down on the hate. And he just keeps doubling down on the on the ridiculous rhetoric. And it's all pro business. It's all free enterprise, libertarian, John Birch Society garbage. And it's all funded. It's not organically funded, folks. Don't believe that any of this right wing, don't believe that people are really, that really love Milo. They're funded by hardcore right wing billionaires and multi multi-millionaires. So there's an agenda that gets out it reminds me of the books from Laura Ingram, Dinesh D'Souza, Monica Crowley, Michelle Malkin, uh, Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, Ann Coulter. Who am I missing? These people aren't, they, their publishers are owned by right-wingers. Their books, you can, I, I kid you not, there's a website that you can go on and you can literally get a case of these books um, that are recent, year old, some cases, and uh, from one of these writers that I just talked about for like nothing. They have warehouses full of these books. First of all, who's paying for them? Second of all, who's paying these horrible, who's who's paying Laura Ingram's salary? You know, this was, remember when Clear Channel kind of took over everything in the 90, in the late 90s, early 2000s after Bill Clinton deregulated the industry? Well, Clear Channel just evolved into different, it's no, it's 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 involved, it evolved into different groups and different organizations. When you listen, when you go into a city and all you can find is right-wing radio, do you think that people don't want to hear a, a leftist perspective? Of course they do. 
but there isn't the left spending billion, willing to lose literally and I'm not joking here willing to lose billions of dollars over 30 or 10 15 20 years to get their agenda out and you see where we are we are uh, you can see how it's worked from the Heritage Foundation to the American Enterprise Institute to I mean with all of these th these publishers and think tanks and this essentially started in about 1971 Chamber of Commerce gets together with the Nixon administration and says we need to do something to get all Republicans and conservatives together. We need all the richest people in the world, all the richest conservatives, the, the religious conservatives, the Rockefeller conservatives, you know, the, the moderate Republicans. We need to get them all together, get all their money, and start creating magazines, television shows, publishing houses, radio stations, and get our, our information out there. And if you want more on this, um, some great books have been written about it from Michael Parenti um, and, and others. Um, if anyone's interested and you, want, you really want the name of these authors and the names of these books, I will gladly give them to you. Just please ask. Um, and you can search for yourself, by the way. One of the fun things I love about Google is just search, just getting down a thread, typing something in, and just following where that goes. You can spend hours and hours just following the different threads that go because you need to know all of it. There isn't one book that's going to tell you what you need to know or one documentary or one thing. you got to, hundreds, dozens. So dozens, hundreds, whatever, you, you know, and um, multiple sources. But Alex Jones is espousing, is, is now with people, like, like I said, James O'Keefe. This guy's a real, these, these people have been proven liars. They're hardcore right wing. They have an agenda. People don't love these people. They're not. They're not waiting for their content to come out. The Fox News, um, which is now the most watched news show in America, what no news network in America. I mean, it's it's been a propaganda campaign, and Americans have fallen, have been induced into a coma of conservative think. And the election that we just had, that Hillary Clinton didn't, did win. I think people um, wanted change. The people in the Midwest that did vote for Donald Trump, a lot of people did vote for Donnie Tiny Hands, and that's and that's fine. I get that. And he he emphasizes how they were worried about the electoral college because Republicans are always concerned with the electoral college because that's how you win. First of all, that's that's logical. But also, it's easier to steal those states. It's easier to steal Michigan. It's easier to steal Wisconsin. It's easier to steal Florida again, Ohio, New, New North Carolina, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Much easier to do that than try to fuck with New York City or, or Seattle or Washington State or, or California. It's much easier to take these because a lot of these states lean conservative anyway. And then you just vote cage. Then you just gerrymander the districts. Then you just flat out steal the votes or you have votes never get counted. You have recounts stopped by conservative courts. And this is all in, this is all in Great Palace's stuff, work, and this is all in, in um, David Daly's work. Amongst others, there are others that have written about this, but those two are the I think are the best because they're so easy to read and so kind of layman's common sense driven stuff. Very good investigative journalists, both of them. Um, so Alex Jones is fed into all of this, right? And he's never, ever, ever back. I mean, one of the one of the great Hillary Clinton bashers is Alex Jones, and I'm not again, I'm not a fan of Hillary Clinton, but you have to be honest when you're doing an assessment of these people. They have an agenda. And their agenda, if you watch Alex Jones's nightly news program, in the middle of it, there will be literally a seven-minute gold infomercial. You know, gold is the most undervalued asset in world history. Gold has intrinsic value. I mean, the whole Alex Jones gold thing, that's his job. He's owned by Midas Resources. That's who pays Alex Jones's salary. Gloom and doom and fear porn is what sells gold. Go watch anything Peter Schiff does. Anybody who's familiar with Peter Schiff, Anybody who's familiar with that, and I know a lot of people like him, and if you see through what he's doing, you won't, Max Kaiser. And I don't want to go too far into Max Kaiser because I, I, I'm just going to say go watch Max Kaiser and see how sincere and genuine he is. I once watched Max, I once watched Max Kaiser and Alex Jones in a hotel room at Bilderberg, 2010 or something maybe, maybe 11 or 12, I don't know. And he comes on and he's like... Alex Jones comes out from his big Berkey water filter breaking. Big Berkey water filter now has an available keychain that'll that'll get you know one ounce of water on the move, you know that kind of thing. And they come back in the break and he introduces um, Max Kaiser. Max Kaiser goes, oh, "I love big Berkey water filters. Oh, I have one. I love them. They're great. Go buy one." And Alex Jones, to his credit, goes, "You don't own a big Berkey water filter." And Max Kaiser goes, "No, you're right. I don't." And laughs. And it's so funny. <laughs> Ah, now let's go change the world. I mean, seriously, they're salesmen, they're liars, they're disingenuous. They, 
Max Kaiser can do all the interviews he wants in France and everywhere else about how bad America is, and he may be right. Propaganda only works. Propaganda only works when when there's truth in it. You can't just lie to people. But their propaganda isn't to. I don't think disinform. I think it's to make money. I've always said this. The conspiracy community is full of right wingers who are want to be rich. And Max Kaiser is a, a an investment banker piece of shit. Him and that. Walking Dead, as I've said, his Walking Dead girlfriend, Stacey Herbert or Haybear, or whatever the fuck her last name is. And they come out, and yeah, they say a lot of really great stuff. They interview people I like, they say things I like, but at the end of the day, being a Max Kaiser pimping out Bitcoin, a digital currency, which the predominant amount is owned by the federal government, which um, saying it's the future, saying digital currency is gone, pumping gold and silver, his JP Morgan, short JP Morgan scam which was to get you to buy silver with an 8% markup in the guise of taking down JP Morgan. Because, you know, if we if we buy a certain amount of gold, silver, uh, JP Morgan will be able to uh, cover their 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 market uh, uh, cap. They don't have enough money. We get it to a billion dollars or, or $3 billion they only have, et cetera. I mean, it was such a scam and it was so goddamn crass, but only dumb shit right wingers who think that gun control is the most important issue would ever buy into that shit. It's paranoia. It's gloom and doom. Oh, why do you think gold is still over 1,100 an ounce? What is it, 12 something an ounce today? Gold should be around 1,000 at the most, probably 900. But it keeps being inflated by gloom and doom, fear porn by the, the hardcore right wing. That's what funds a lot of this shit. The, just trying to, that's what, that's what is behind a lot of this shit. Rich people trying to make more money off of the conspiracy community that is gloom and doom that sells gold and silver. Gold and silver only sells if people are scared of the economy. If they believe that the dollar is going to collapse or and coming to clap close, they're going to put they're going to hedge their their gold is a hedge for inflation. Hedge against inflation. It isn't a hedge against inflation, but never mind that. You can just keep saying that because over the short term it seems to be a hedge against inflation, but in the long term it isn't. Gold is a commodity that should be traded just like every other commodity. You don't ever take physical you never take physical um, possession of gold. You simply put it in your portfolio and then trade it around. Um, unless you're a gold bug, unless you think the gold standard's coming back, or unless you think that, you know, you're one of these people who believes that there's only so much, fun, there's there's a finite amount of gold in the world, which is technically true, but the lo the world is a very large place, <laughs> and there's a lot of places that have gold that haven't even been discussed or talked about yet. There are gold mines that have been shut down and, and shuttered. Um, and, and gold is also one of those things that people can do independently. You know, you can go, if you have enough money, you can go out with a pick and a pan, or you can go out with some heavy equipment and, and strip mine someplace, and Alaska's full of that full of people who think, you know, they're going to get rich on gold and go up to the north and, and uh, strip mine shit. You know, they just leave tailings and they just destroy the environment. And people don't care because it's so rural in Alaska. So what the fuck does it matter, right? Ah, who cares if I'm if I'm polluting this section? Because it's so vast. You know, who gives a shit, right? As long as I make enough money to, to get rich. And it's greed and venality and blah, blah, blah. And it's largely funded by the right wing. Um, not largely funded by the right wing. It was entirely by the right wing. Um, Alex Jones, Paul Joseph Watson... The whole right wing cabal over at Infowars to actually advocate that the war on terror is real is a sea change. It's an absolute 180 degree turn from where they were just not even 10 years ago. And what it says to me is they've always had an agenda. And that, I mean, he he bashed Bush. He went after Bush, of course, and that was W and 9 11 was an inside job and the Bush administration. And then really amped it up with Obama. Obama was now the most evil thing that ever walked on the earth. I mean, Barack Obama is without question the most evil person that Alex Jones has ever had the misinform the, the the terrible. I mean, the Obama deception. How about all of Cor Jerome Corsi's terrible investigation about how he wasn't born in America, that he's a secret Muslim? All of that mus secret Muslim shit about Obama came from Alex Jones, um, <clears throat> O'Keefe, the hardcore right wing. They tried to destabilize the Obama administration by calling him a Muslim, the birther. Alex Jones was one of the, is still a birther. They showed the, I mean, <clears throat> of course we know that Donald Trump now no longer believes it, but he did at the time. Now, why would they think that Barack Obama was a, wasn't born in this country? Because he was born in Hawaii? Because, no, it's because he's half black and he's made, and he, and he was seen in a Muslim, and he was uh, around Muslims, and that he had traveled to Indonesia and other places and his family, but mostly because he wasn't white. If, if he had been white and named Barack Obama, but named, but was white, very few people would have gone after him for being a Muslim. They would have just thought it was silly or that he wasn't born in this country. But because he was black and because the right wing doesn't didn't want him to be president, neither did I. But for different reasons. 
because uh, he was a systemist piece of shit. Um, <clears throat> I did vote for Barack Obama. There, I said it. Because I felt good about voting for a black person. There, fuck it. I felt really fucking good <laughs> in America going into the voting booth and voting for a black man for president. It felt really good to me. So that's why I voted for Barack Obama. It was simply an aesthetics thing. I was, I'm, I'm, I wanted to see a man of color finally be the most powerful person in the world. But, and look how, and look how great he did for all of us, right? I'm an idiot. But the point of all the, the I'm going to wrap this video up. The point is that the hardcore right wing, the Paul Joseph Watsons of the world, the Alex Jones of the world, they're full of shit and they have an agenda. And if you can't see through their agenda, their agenda isn't to tell you the truth. Their agenda isn't to get you smarter, more empowered. Their agenda is hardcore right wing politics. Blame the government, not the corporation. Never blame the Koch brothers, but blame the government. Blame politicians who have very little power anyway, not the CEO. Don't blame the free market ever. Don't blame, don't try to build up government, try to take government down. Support people who are libertarian, who, which I said in my video yesterday, why the fuck would you vote for somebody who is anti-government to run your government? It's like saying, I made the analogy, somebody, let's say I'm against burgers and fries, you, would you elect me, would you want me to be the CEO of McDonald's? If you, you know, if you were a stockholder, if you were a citizen, if you, you know, no, you wouldn't, it would be silly. And that's exactly the same thing. If you're anti-government, why are you running for government? Why are you, go and fight it, go advocate outside. It's like Ron Paul. I'm amazed at the asshole nature of Ron Paul. Ron Paul, of course, a, Alex Jones, one of Alex Jones's favorite gold shills. You know, Ron Paul works with Stor Porter Stansberry and uses his name to pump gold and tell you that the, that the imminent dollar collapse is coming. And, and Ron Paul makes millions of dollars doing this, okay? And it's, he's been doing this for a long time. And he pimps gold. That's Ron Paul's, I mean, it, he does it all the time. It's not a conspiracy theory. He does it all the time. He makes infomercials with Porter Stansberry. And <clears throat> telling you that the dollar is going to collapse, that you can't trust the, you can't trust any of the system, the federal government is the problem. Ron Paul made millions of dollars off the federal government. Millions. Millions, 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 millions. And yet was a libertarian, wanted to take government away. Wanted to reduce government, yet made millions of dollars while working for the government. If he really wanted to get rid of the federal government, he should have started a little institution, should have started a think tank, got a bunch of his conservative buddies together, and never and opposed the government at every chance, at every at every step. But instead, he infiltrated the very government that he wanted to take down. Government works when you have people inside of it that are pro government. That's it. Government is the org is is an it's not the only one but it's an organizing principle of human beings. There is nothing inherently evil about it. Only when moneyed, greedy interests get involved. Only when people. Only when corporations merge with the government, which is called fascism, is government bad. That's when government starts to get too out of control. When private enterprise infiltrates the governing principle of the people. When it when it dictates the terms over the people's needs. That's what's happening in America right now. That's what's going on. Then you have the multinational corporations who have no loyalty to the United States whatsoever, so they'll do anything they want to make a profit. And because they're absolute and because legally they're mandated to maximize their stock price. That's what a CEO's job is. If he doesn't do it, he can he can go to jail. He can be fined. He can, you know. So when you look at Alex Jones and when you look at all these hardcore right wingers, just keep this in mind. They have an agenda. It's business first. They're all owned by the by Koch brothers factions and the singers of the world and right wingers who really, at the end of the day, the agenda is make you distrust the federal government. And it worked. Look what look at look at look at what Donald Trump did. Betsy DeVos, Scott Pruitt. I mean, these people want to deregulate, defund, defang all government agencies that protect you, the citizen, that employs you, the citizen. We need, we don't need less government, we need more government to employ people. We need a New Deal project. But that, to Alex Jones, has got to be the worst fucking thing ever because that would mean that taxes would be increased on the very wealthy. And the very wealthy are the ones that control him, and that just can't happen. Because rich people don't want more taxes, they want less. I mean, and Alex Jones helped Donald Trump get elected profoundly with that kind of idea, with that kind of thought process. And instead of going socialist or spending more or raising taxes, they want to go more free market. They want to have 
the free market, they want to have private business and government get together and run everything. We've seen how well that's worked out. Letting private business run anything when it concerns the commons is not a good idea. Services always get cut. People's wages always get cut. There is a massive amount of overhead and bureaucracy. And privatization is inevitably always bad because it's for profit. If you do, you can't have a healthcare system for profit. You can't have a school system, Betsy DeVos, for profit. I mean, Betsy DeVos said she hopes she puts herself out of a job. She wants to get rid of the Department of Education. That's the majority of Americans, not even close, like 75% think that is an insane idea. But this pro-business agenda, who then conflict, then, you know, they talk about the stuff that's common sense, like Alex, like Donald Trump will come out and talk about, they're stealing your jobs. NAFTA is terrible. And he's right. But then his solution is much worse than NAFTA, or it's much worse than what we have now. Deregulation, defunding and cutting taxes, what is that going to do to our society? We're still in a recession. You got to raise taxes on the rich. You got to increase funding to the cities and the states, states and cities and boroughs and rural areas and cities. You've got to influx the money, the, this, the country with cash that they don't have to pay back. You don't go to the IMF or World Bank where you have to get in debt. You use the federal government to go as much debt as you need to because it's all of our debt. It's modern money theory is what I'm talking about. And disperse that money accordingly. That's the answer. Not deregulation, defunding, and less government. We need more government oversight. We need corporations to stop running roughshod on us and roughshod on their workers. Stop destroying unions. Stop. And this is all what Alex Jones advocates. And this is why Donald Trump is your president. Populism, bad economy, they tired of the system, tired of the lying assholes on television and the media, tired of the lying politicians, tired of all of it. And it's all coming from a corporate agenda. It's not some natural phenomenon grassroots that started. It's funded hundreds of millions of dollars by these big right-wing interests. If you don't believe me, please go do some research. Thank you for listening. And remember, you are being lied to by the right wing, period. You are not being informed. You are not being empowered. You are being lied to, and their agenda is money. Their agenda is be, they're being paid by people who tell them to espouse a certain position. And they probably espouse this position anyway because they're, they're brainwashed troglodyte conservatives. But they are espousing a position that is anti-human, that is anti-people, that is anti-worker, that is anti-labor, that is anti-environment. Do we want any of those things in our country? Of course we don't. Of course, 90% of the people in the country don't want that. But this agenda has been laid out very, very thoughtfully, and it, they have spent hundreds, if not billions of dollars over the last 30 to 40 years to convince you of Reaganomics is good, to convince you that deregulation is good, that all we need is the free market. And if we can just get the free market, everything will be wonderful. It's an illusion. It's a fantasy. It's not based on economic reality. It's not based on anything logical. It's based on fear. It's based on hate. And it's based on distrust. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.